So in this video presentation, we're going to look at the continuity of CPC, polarity and insulation resistance test of our level one PVC conduit exercise. We've got an exercise here which uses a one-way switch controlling a light fitting. This is the first time these learners have done plastic conduit and we're reintroducing the process of carrying out those early dead tests. So it's really important for me that we prove the CPC gets to the exposed conductive part of the box the exposed conductive part of the actual frame that holds the switch, as well as the CPC connections within the actual accessory. We'll also prove the CPC gets up to the plastic light fitting in case it's changed in the future to a metallic one. So this video, we're gonna carry out the continuity of CPC and include the polarity test at the same time, and then follow it with the insulation resistance test of our level one plastic conduit lighting circuit. So unlike earlier video presentations where I actually just linked with a solid link, uh, two crocodile clips each end, the line conductor to the earth bar where the CPC is connected, later videos I've gone on now and I've actually removed the line conductor altogether out of the top of the six amp type B circuit breaker for this circuit and actually screwed it into the earth bar itself so there's a sort of a permanent connection between the two. What we were finding was those crocodile clips kept getting a bit of a high resistive reading for us. So I've linked those two together, but this time I'm linking them by putting them actually in the earth bar. So the CPC and line conductor are linked together. Just to recap for our learners, remember this lighting circuit, because the way it's installed, didn't need an RCD rate at 30 milliamps and below. However, we know our domestic lighting circuits that we would have worked on before this when we're using PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables, absolutely needed RCD protecting. This has just got it, so it doesn't hurt to have the RCD protection, but just remember there's some of the discussions we've had in the classroom. So the link's in place, line and CPC are linked together. We're gonna to go to our switch first. We're gonna prove the CPC gets to there and then we've got to a light and fit in and prove the CPC gets to there and actually we'll prove the polarity that we switch and fuse within the line conductor. So let's set up our mega MFT in order to measure the continuity of the CPC test. That means we're measuring the resistance of the conductor. So we need to move it around to the orange scale, which is for the ohms. So we're gonna measure this in ohms, we're measuring resistance. And we need to insert our leads. It doesn't matter which colors we use, we generally use the, the red and green ones. And again, it does make a difference that we use the correct slots in the top. We're gonna to use the red one and the green one. Historically, we always put the red in red and green in green, but those are the two, we ignore the blue one at this stage. We'll get back to that when we're on the level three apprenticeship. So let's put those in like so. And I'm gonna change it over to the crocodile clips in order to remove the resistance of the leads. Remember the leads have copper in them and therefore these leads will offer resistance in circuit. So maximum surface area to maximum surface area. Aha, flashing zero doesn't mean zero, it means it's below zero. Press the test button once, have a read in, test button again. We've now got a stationary zero, it means we've removed the resistance of these leads. We're ready to do the test. So I'm going to attempt to talk you through as well as show you. It might not be as easy to show you as it is to listen to what I'm saying. So I'm going to connect into the common of the switch, this brown conductor here being the permanent line from the consumer unit. The other brown out of L1 is the switching line to the light. So I'm going to use the common and I'm going to connect to the earth terminal, the frame, the earth terminal and the box in order to prove they're all connected to the CPC. I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. So I'm in common and if I get enough pressure, I'm onto the earth terminal at the same time time. So we'll go with 0.2, yeah, 0.2 of an ohm, come off, and now I'm going to go back into common. And for me, I'm going to use the hole here where the threads were for one of the screws. And I get, when it settles down, 0.23. So that was using the hole here because it's got nice and clean inside where the threads are. So you have a really good connection. If you go onto the back of the actual plate, you have to scratch some of it away in order to get down to the bright steel. So I went common, and that threaded section there. So we're now going to the common of the back box. So common here and into the back box. It's gone to the earth terminal, reading of 0.24. And then we're gonna go again to the threaded area here of the screw and we get 0.24 again, 0.25, yeah, as it settles down. So we've got to remember the highest reading there. So I've got 0 0.2, let's go with five, 0 0.25 of an ohm, proving the CPC got to the front plate CPC got to here, CPC got to here, but he got to the box as well. Gary, it's really important the frame is earthed and the box is earthed, and we don't just prove it on the actual CPC terminals. We're now gonna go up to the light. We're gonna operate the switch when we're up there as well as part polarity test, and we're gonna prove there is a CPC also connected to the light next. 
So I've pulled the camera back a little bit further. So again, you're gonna to have to listen to what I'm doing. The reason I've done that is I want you to see the operator switch, the full scale deflection of the instrument, and I'll talk you through where I'm probing on here. So we're probing into the line and CPC and the actual fitting itself. I'll try as best I can. It's gonna be really tricky to do. So if I go line and I go CPC, first of all in here, let's see if we have a reading. We have no reading whatsoever. Okay, so you can start panicking or you can think, is it the switch in the, the off position? So let's operate the switch. Let's go back up again. Let's go onto the CPC and then onto the line itself. And we have a reading of 0.2, let's go with 0.27. So we had no reading to start with, we we'll operate the switch, we have a reading. So if we repeat the process, if we operate the switch again, we should now find we have no reading. And we don't repeat the process again operate the switch back onto the line and CPC up here. And we should find we got a reading. We have. Of all the readings we get, we record the highest one of those readings in the box heading R1 plus R2 under the continuity test. We then can tick the polarity box, proving that we switch and fuse in the line conductor. The switch was connected in the line conductor and we've got this brown conductor here that would be in the fuse as part of our polarity test. Now requires to put all the covers back on leave the switch in the on position in order that we can carry out our insulation resistance test next. So let's change our instrument from ohms because we're measuring the resistance of the conductors for continuity. And let's move it around into the meg ohm scale, the mega ohm scale here. And we're gonna be testing it at 500 volts DC in order to perform our insulation resistance test on our 230 volt lightened circuit. So the instrument's all set up ready for our insulation resistance test. We've put the covers back on. Our load's been removed, so we've got no lamps in circuit. Our switch has been left in the on position. We need to remember to remove our line conductor from our earth bar and put it back in the top of the circuit breaker, like so, remembering to get the torque screwdriver off your Electra and tighten that back up. Ours is currently out on location. So we go back in with our connection, return it to the required torque setting. The RCCB needs to be off because there are electronic components in there and will be damaged potentially by the 500 volts DC pass through the circuit. We always leave our circuit breaker off. However, our circuit breaker doesn't have any electronic components in it. The reason being the test, when we test it, tests outwards, but it also tests down. If we left our breaker on, the 500 volts would pass through it and across the bottom of the RCCB which does have electronic components in. So we'll leave that one in the off position. I know you're a bit further away for this test, but we've done it many times on the channel. So hopefully, as you're watching this as one of my learners, you'll, you'll hear me where I'm putting it and you'll go, oh yeah, Gaz, I remember what we're doing. So switches on, covers on, RCCB off, breaker off, set to the appropriate scale on our instrument, and we're ready to go. First of all, we're gonna connect onto the earth bar. It doesn't matter where I go onto the earth bar. So I'm onto the earth bar and on the top of the breaker, and we press and hold our button. And our reading is greater than 999 mega ohms. Take a finger off the button. We go on to the neutral bar. Doesn't matter where we go on the neutral bar. And our reading is greater than 999 mega ohms. We move our crocodile clip across and we go onto the neutral bar, the one that normally falls off on camera. And just keep it on today. Onto the top of the breaker where the line conductor. So do line and neutral next and we press and hold and we go again. And that's our insulation resistance test completed. So at level one, when we've completed our conduit exercise, our one-way lighting circuit, we carry out the continuity CPC test, recording the highest reading of the box heading R1 plus R2. When we operate the switch at the lighting point, we prove that we switch and fuse in the line conductor. We can tick the polarity box. We put our covers back on, we leave our switch on. We turn our RCCB off and also our circuit breaker we change our scale on the instrument into the mega ohm scale and we carry out insulation resistance tests as discussed. Even if I'm not currently teaching you and you're working out at Tresham College, I hope this video has been some help.